Hello everybody, this is Mariana Smolchev. I'm an English and Croatian language teacher uh, and I'm also an e-training uh, inclusive education group moderator. Thank you so much for coming to the 10th anniversary webinar and I'm so happy that uh, I, my great colleague and my dear friend Helena Strutel from my own school, a secondary school of Gimnasia Bernardina Frankopana in Ogulin, Croatia, is having this wonderful webinar. I will um, give uh, Helena soon the mic, but I would just like to add that today is the 21st of June, that our group, e uh, Inclusive Education Group, is about two, two and a half years old, we are still very young, but this is the 10th webinar, and for all those people who haven't been able to join us, I'm going to give, uh, let's say, a special offer if they are willing to watch the recording and maybe then answer a few quizzes on, on their presentation. And they will be able to get the certificate of participation even if they weren't able to sign up for the webinar. Now, thank you, Stavrola, for your nice comments and everybody here for coming. Before I start, I would just like to say that I'm so happy to be working with my dear friend Helena. Helena has a Greek name, right, colleagues from Greece? And uh, she has been such a dear colleague. We work a lot together. And she was willing to give a nice uh, talk about students' anxiety problems. Uh, Helena is a psycho school psychologist. She, she lo works a lot with our secondary students. She, uh, she's a lifelong learner. And I'm, I'm going to give her the mic. Maybe she can uh, tell you more about herself. Uh, now I'm going to start her presentation, and she's going to be uh, willing to share something about herself. It's such a pleasure to have her with us, and uh, for any questions that you might have for Helena, uh, or if uh, there are uh, questions in the chat, or maybe that you have posted them beforehand in the Google form, I must tell you that maybe we will not have enough time um, to answer them now, but Helena is willing to give a complete comment and answers which are going to be posted in our group under the live event page that I'm going to create later uh, for her event. Um, since we are in school, the bandwidth could be a bit slow, so uh, don't worry, we are going to pause our video. Uh, and uh, then Helena is going to talk. Don't worry, we are here, you're going to hear us, but we're just going to see our uh, own camera. So Helena, just say hello, hello to all of everybody. Hello everybody once again, uh, and congratulations Mariana on your work, in your group. I'm glad to be here. Uh, like Mariana already said, I'm a school teacher, I teach psychology, and I'm also a school psychologist. And today we will talk about students' anxiety problems, and I will talk from my practice. And I hope you will uh, find something useful for you, maybe privately, maybe professionally. So maybe we can start. Yes, I'm going to give the mic to Helena, so enjoy her presentation. Thank you for coming. So uh, I believe this is a... a, a this is a team that you all know and you all deal with every day. Um, so let's start. Just a second. So anxiety. Uh, first, we will try to define it. Uh, anxiety is normal feeling, normal emotion, but unpleasant, uh, especially uh, when it intenses. And we can define it as a mixture of three dominant emotions, uh, worry, fear, and tension. And they all together come as anxiety. Uh, when does it appear? It appears in situations where an individual assesses the situation as a threat. So stimulus is some threatening, threatening situation. Um, and it is uh, known that anxiety uh, 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 is uh, anxiety um, includes strong physiological response uh, like uh, heartbeat, uh, sweating, trembling, etc. And because of all of that, it can uh, have a great effect on your sleep, uh, actually, lack of sleep. Why do we become anxious? 
uh, first we have hereditary anxiety sensibility. It's a part of our temperament. And also we learn emotional responses from others, like our uh, family, like our colleagues, etc. And combination of these two factors comes as tendency to experience anxiety, so we don't react in the same way at the similar situation. Okay, let me go on. Today we will talk about some everyday situations in the classroom when the teacher needs to help his anxious student. Uh, we will not talk about psychotherapy. Uh, this is uh, not a part of our teacher's job, but we will talk about some uh, uh, situations that are when, where, where you can help, where uh, as a teacher you can help your student. First, we have to understand, even though anxiety is unpleasant emotion, it's useful and it's protecting us from some uh, negative or maybe dangerous situation. Uh, today, I will um, ask you to try to imagine some situations. So we may start, uh, we may, we may start with the uh, first exercise. Uh, try to imagine. Uh, you are worried if you have locked your car. So because of that worry, uh, you are checking. You check, did you uh, lock your car? And that's okay. But if you are still worried and you have to check it twice or maybe more, you will feel anxious about it and that becomes unpleasant. And now try to imagine the described or maybe some similar anxiety of yours. And try to imagine further on you're in a workplace and you are still thinking about your car, did you lock it? And you have to go once again. This is the point when it uh, becomes a saving for you to function normally. And this is where the problem starts. And now try imagine something else. Imagine you're anxious about something more serious, not just cars. Try to imagine uh, you're anxious about uh, your work inspection. They will come to see how you deal with your classes and they will evaluate your work. If you do well, you will keep your job. But if you do poorly, you will be fired. Can you imagine that kind of a worry? Now, in this uh, imagination, try to go on and imagine what would you be thinking next. Maybe something like this. What happens if I lose my job? It's a big worry. Or maybe, what if I lose my home? Or maybe, what if my family will be hungry? Or maybe, what if my colleagues will think of me as I'm a failure? and so on and on, so many what ifs, and they are all unpleasant. And now, tell me, if you are so anxious about some serious situations like this one, do you think you can function normally? Do you think you can sleep, uh, eat like you usually do? Do you think you can rest? I guess not. It's important to understand that anxiety can last for a very long period, maybe for a few days. Uh, sometimes even for a few weeks, and sometimes even longer. But then we are probably talking about the anxiety disorder, and that's uh, not our subject today. And uh, if you are anxious for a longer period of time, you will become tired, stressed out, exhausted. You will lose your self-confidence step by step. And now, try to imagine this. Try to imagine that you don't have the developed uh, coping skills that you actually have as an adult. But try to imagine that you're a teenager and you are very anxious about, let's say, your history exam, or maybe you, are, uh, uh, you have to meet new pupils and move to a new school. And I will remind you, try not to underestimate these worries as you might uh, do from your perspective as an adult now. Uh, imagine that they are the biggest worries of all. You're a teenager now. Sometimes adolescent students imagine the worst scenario, like uh, if I get full grade from this exam, I will ruin my chances for college, job, or even marriage. Uh, these projections uh, that students have can go very far away from the present and far away from reality, and they are terrifying for them. 
Now, it's probably easy for you to understand how it can damage everyday functioning for our students. Um, and while we are feeling like this, uh, you have to do some of the most difficult cognitive operations. You have to learn for exams. And learning includes strong motivation, concentration, remembering, writing, and so on and on. And do you think it's possible or easy to do? Probably not. So, uh, what I'm trying to emphasize with this uh, imaginary uh, imagining is that I think anxiety is actually some kind of special need in students uh, and should be talked about. So, we are here today. I will show you now the results of our school uh, survey that we uh, conducted uh, two years ago. Uh, we had a project uh, named uh, Learning School, teachers and uh, students were educated, um, actually uh, teachers were educated in uh, teaching methods to students with uh, special needs. And one of those needs was an exam anxiety. Uh, uh, this was one of the questions in our uh, survey. I think that exam anxiety is a valid criteria for adjusted teaching methods. And here are the answers. Uh, those are the answers from our school, or from our teachers. And uh, you can see uh, that teachers in our school mostly agree with this claim that it is a special need for students. What do you think? And mm -hmm. okay, you you can write your answer. Mm -hmm. What would you? What would you answer? Agree. agree. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. And, mm -hmm. okay, we will wait for a few more answers, maybe. Agree, okay, Laura. Mm -hmm. Agree. Mm -hmm. I also agree. Okay. And Mariana? Mariana agree? definitely <laughs> agrees. <laughs> definitely, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Most agree. Mm -hmm. Agree. Agree. So similar like uh, we answered when we were conducting this survey. Okay. I believe we can go to the next question. Thank you, Amy. I think that I'm professionally competent to work with students who are suffering from exam anxiety. Maybe you can uh, answer in the chat again. And those are uh, our answers in our school. So, as you can see, uh, most of our teachers just moderately agree with the claim that they are competent. Okay, we will go back to the presentation. Okay, thank you. And what would have been your answer? Don't agree? Mm -hmm. Mostly agree. Mm -hmm. uh, so, based on this result, uh, in Project We Organize, uh, education is about dealing with anxiety. Uh, for teachers and also for our students. And uh, I, as a school psychologist, um, hold a lecture of this subject for the parents of the first grade students in our school. Thank you for your answers. I see they're still coming. Okay. So, we definitely... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, so, definitely, we, we do recognize it as a special need. And here are some, sh maybe the most common shapes of anxiety I meet uh, in my everyday work with students. Uh, there are some more, but I try to uh, try to talk short, short this uh, list. Uh, if you have difficulties uh, imagining to feel anxious in our earlier exercises, and that's because you had uh, rarely experienced something similar. Uh, first, I have to say you're very lucky, and uh, maybe you could try to sympathize with the person you know, maybe your uh, neighbor, colleague, spouse, or somebody you know, and who is anxious sometimes. Or maybe you can um, sympathize with these described students we were talking about. But I believe that as a school expert, you have experience that students can suffer from a very serious and different shades of anxiety. Uh, these three are the most common, like I said, 
timing uh, in my everyday work. Exam anxiety uh, means worries like uh, what if I fail at the uh, exam, what if I block memory during the test, what if I forget everything that I learned, and so on. Social anxiety means worries like what if I get embarrassed, so that's the, the main uh, preoccupation. And anxiety because of the fear or parental pressure um, uh, means worry, uh, what if I disappoint them, my parents or my, my uh, friends. And so, these are uh, the three shapes of anxiety we will be talking today. Uh, we will be talking about today. Okay. And now we will go on. Uh, now you will uh, see the question: How can you recognize the student is suffering? And Mariana will. Okay, just wait for a second. Mariana will share a uh, multimeter. Question, so you may try to answer it. Just a second. So I'm starting the second question. Uh, so please, if you still have your menti.com or mobile phones or tablets here, you can uh, please go to the menti.com and enter this code 22. 2980 and just give us one or two words regarding how can you recognize that student is suffering from anxiety? What do you think? What would be your thank you, Stavrula, for the link? Thank you so much. Okay, so you can either go in your browser and open another browser, another tab, uh, or another window to answer this question, and we are going to see how the answers are coming. I hope I have uh, started the right. Thank you, Mariana. So the code is 222980. So for those who are going to copy and paste, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So just one or two words. Maybe I haven't. Just, just let me check if I have started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should be a more code. It should be a word cloud, yes. Yeah. So we, we, are, we are going to wait for your answers a little bit. Five people came, gave the answers. I don't know why they are not showing. Just a moment. We're going to see. Going back to the presentation. Uh, for those who do not are not able to maybe use Menti, they, uh, then you can please uh, just write in chat, and then we can uh, have them in chat written. And I'm going to check what is happening with the menti.com. Maybe I have blocked it, paused it, or something. We see the answers, but maybe I wasn't. Uh, just let me see. Show results. There was a pin in my notes. Okay, yeah, oh, sorry. No, okay. Yeah, uh, just, just a moment. I'm just going. Uh, the, uh, there was a slight mistake with my menti. And, uh, so I'm just going to show you the screen again. I found it what was uh, uh, wrong. I hope you can see now that uh, what you have written and uh, uh, you can read. Mm -hmm. so okay. Nervous. Nervous, no, the most common answer, right? Uh, expression. Fail, absent minded, unsuccessful, hyperactivity, headache, uh, body position, oh, okay, sex oriented, sadness, okay, expression, worried, absolutely, stomach, is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't, can, ah, yes, it is, I will, uh, I will say something about it. Mm -hmm. Sadness, worried, okay, I see okay. you, you uh, have experience and yet yeah, you do recognize. Some of the indicators, and maybe I will just add a few more. Um, how can you recognize a student who is uh, feeling anxious at the moment? Here are some of the indicators. Um, 
I made three groups, but uh, of course they always come together. Um, student is quiet. Uh, why is he quiet? He's quiet because uh, he's maybe sad, like some some of you said. Um, he's insecure of his knowledge and he's insecure of maybe his uh, other performances. And uh, he um, uh, he avoids to do the given tasks. Uh, he postpones his obligations. Uh, he makes mistakes like skipping the questions. That's um, a very common situation. Um, he, uh, he's afraid of failure or sometimes he's afraid of just even talking to a teacher and he avoids even try to give an answer and he rather says, I don't know. Uh, I want to uh, I want the answer. I don't know. And some physiological signs of anxiety are easy to perceive, like uh, blushing, or maybe shivering, uh, biting nails, sweating, squirming, um, etc. Uh, it's not uh, unusual for an anxious person to uh, experience lack of sleep, and during the day she's tired, she's sleepy, uh, she may look like she's lazy, actually. And uh, we have to think uh, uh, what's, what's the problem exactly. Um, the most easy sign to recognize is when a student tells you. He comes and tells you directly, I'm afraid, or maybe something, what if I embarrass myself uh, during a, a presentation or something similar. And now, maybe uh, the most interesting for you will be uh, this advice is in some uh, situations that I believe are familiar to all of us. Uh, how can you help when you see the student is uh, anxious at the moment? Okay, here is uh, one uh, message or sentence that we believe is uh, helpful, that is comforting, but actually uh, it's not a good thing to say. Uh, why? I will explain it now because uh, it's, you have a good intention, you, you're, you're trying to help your student, but he could uh, misinterpret your uh, message. And he could uh, think something like, um, like you are saying to him, that, you're, that he's the only one that has ever felt frightened about uh, this situation. Or um, he may think something like, oh, everybody else is successful dealing with this issue except me, uh, because they're saying there's nothing to be afraid of. Or maybe, um, like one of the worst scenarios, he may think, oh, I'm so weak and weird. Uh, it may look like you're misunderstanding and maybe even no sympathy, and um, it's important to, to be careful with this sentence. Uh, we will talk late, uh, later what else we can say, but it's not recommendable to say there's nothing to be afraid of because he is afraid of something. We just need to find out what it is. Okay, uh, can you answer in uh, our chat on this question? Let's say you, you notice that your student is anxious at the time and he has to do the test. Uh, do you think that it's okay to tell him, okay, I think uh, that you're anxious now? To so tell him openly. Okay, thank you for your answer. They will be coming. Yes. 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 No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quietly, yes. Okay, so nobody else can hear, I guess. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the most of you said yes. I also say. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Mariana? Um, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But Nina says no. Nina says no. Okay. Cornelia, yes. Yes, I want it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. And uh, I will show you a uh, suggestion. Uh, Yes, it is okay to, to tell your students that you perceive, that you notice, that you see it. Uh, if you do it in an honest way, supportive and friendly way, it's okay to say. Um, 
how to say, uh, stay calm and show that you perceive that specific emotion, anxiety, as any other emotion. That way, uh, you normalize the emotion and show it should not be secret or uh, should not be shameful. It's normal emotion, like we said before. This is a suggestion how you can tell him. Uh, oh, it seems to me you are pretty worried about your test. Am I right? Uh, I'm sorry that you feel this way. Let's try to reduce your worry. I believe that I understand how you feel because it's not unusual for any student to feel like that sometimes. I have felt it too. Can you tell me what is your exact worry at the moment so we can analyze and try to win it together? So I will try to explain uh, this blue part of these sentences. If you say, am I right, uh, you are showing the interest and uh, you didn't judge, but you asked, are you, uh, are you right? Because uh, you may be right, of course. And then if you say, I'm sorry that you feel this way, you are showing empathy for your student. And then if you say, I believe that I understand how you feel, uh, because it's not unusual for any student, you are showing that it's a normal feeling and it could happen to anybody. And it's not a bad feeling uh, of any kind. And then, if you say, I have felt it too, especially if you did, actually, and I believe all of us have in some situations, you are sincere and uh, your student uh, should feel that he can rely on you because you have a similar experience. And from my experience, I can tell that here and this dot, wait, at this dot, it usually stops, and we think uh, we are supported, but uh, one important part is this, what comes to the, uh, to the end, and that is, can you tell me what is your exact worry at the moment? This is a very important question, because if you know what is the exact worry, we, you can do uh, the important thing, and that is to analyze, uh, try to win, together the situation. Uh, if you say that you believe you can analyze it with him, you are showing that you have some knowledge about the subject, and if you say that you will do it together, you are showing uh, that you want to help him. And uh, maybe this looks like uh, it takes a lot of time from your classes, but actually it's a few sentences and uh, can be very, very helpful. Uh, it can be done, um, I don't know, uh, before your class, after your class, and so on, when it is convenient time. Uh, so this, uh, uh, when we say, excuse me, I will go back, what is your exact worry? These are some of the answers possible. Um, what if I get poor grade? It may be concrete worry. Or maybe, what if I start to shiver? Uh, what if I forget everything? What if I skip some questions? What if I block and so on and on? And uh, and uh, uh, you have to find out what it is. And if you know it is a poor grade and not uh, a fear of skipping questions, you will talk about uh, uh, the exact problem that student has. Okay. Um, and now let's... Um, Let's say that your student tells you, I'm afraid of a, of a poor grade. This is a, I don't know, a suggestion of one short conversation possible. Uh, these blue clouds are uh, professors, and the orange clouds that will appear are uh, students. And let's imagine this conversation. So, uh, professor asked, and the student answered, he's afraid of the poor grade, and now teacher starts the conversation. Okay, I understand that poor grade is what worries you. What will happen if you really get this poor grade? And students now think and answer, hmm, uh, so I will have to do the test again. And teacher continues, okay, if you have to do the test again, what will happen to work in that situation? Student thinks and she says, actually nothing. I can correct my grade at any time. Okay. And teacher says, great, do you feel better now? And student will say, probably, I guess, yes, I do. Uh, do you think you're able to do the test now? 
and students will probably say, yes, I believe I can do it. And now, a uh, teacher will say, great, now concentrate on your questions. And if this thought about getting full grade, this one from the, uh, this one, okay, this one from the beginning, and if this uh, uh, thought about getting full grade comes to your mind, remember that you already know the solution if that really happens. And the solution is here. And good luck with your test, of course. Uh, so, here, at this point, um, is an important moment because um, he started a conversation about something that is uh, really a uh, problem for a student. And at this point, a student uh, has realized the problem is not unsolvable or, or, or he finds the solution. And now what's happening? Uh, in this, excuse me, I'm trying to, okay. In this uh, step, student is uh, seeing the situation is catastrophic and he's uh, feeling his anxiety, fear, or something. And at this point, he thinks something like, okay, I can correct it. It's not catastrophic at all. It's even optimistic. So his emotions are less unpleasant. Okay. Now, we will talk about mental blocking. I believe you have all seen it. Uh, during the test, um, one of the fears is, what if I block? Uh, maybe, and sometimes that is the problem, uh, that the student has an either un, um, inadequate learning strategy and uh, are joined with feeling of insecurity and fear. And that student needs, uh, needs help actually with learning strategies. And you can help him with that as a teacher. And sometimes, sometimes that's the problem. But sometimes a uh, student has prepared, but he still blocks during the test. And uh, you can offer him to do the short walk in front of the classroom, maybe two or three minutes uh, or less sometimes, or to stretch. Uh, I've tried it for a few times, and students react uh, good. It helps them because they uh, go away from this awkward situation where they uh, they are mentally blocking, they cannot um, continue their test, and they go back and they feel better. You can try. Yes, yes, it's very individual. Um, one of the fears is uh, fear of an oral exam. Uh, we already said that some students are afraid of even talking uh, to a teacher. And what can we do in this situation? Uh, it's okay to talk to a student about something that is not related to a subject of teaching. I don't know, like in school corridors, before or after the, uh, the class. And uh, this will help your student to know you as a person and not just a teacher. Then uh, you have to, uh, you may to uh, check his knowledge in a formative way uh, while you are teaching. So he will be uh, able to, to experience uh, your reaction when his answers are correct and in situation when his answers are incorrect. And actually it's a very low risk situation for him. And this should help him to adapt to the situation and uh, to, to develop coping mechanisms. Uh, if you are able, uh, try to enable him a trial oral exam. Um, and after this trial, you have to do the after examination talk, and you you will ask him, did you find the situation threatening? What was your problem? Uh, and then analyze it in a way like we described before. And of course, you can consider other ways of checking the knowledge. Maybe it's not necessary to do the oral exam uh, always. Uh, social anxiety is, uh, like we said before, uh, actually worry, what if I embarrass myself, so I'll, I'll rather stay uh, away, I will not raise my hand, I will not um, come out, be active in the classroom, and so on. So, uh, it's important for this student to have a situation where he can approach the goal performance step by step. Let's say something like this. Uh, let's say that uh, 
goal uh, performance is to perform uh, okay to perform the short presentation solo. But let's say our student has a social anxiety and that's very very difficult for him. If he, he will probably avoid it, so uh, we can help him by by uh, step by step. So in the first step, uh, he can just help other students by I don't know changing the slides. In the second step, uh, he will have to read from a paper, doing it together with another student. Here can be a third step where he can read from a paper but solo. And then he will participate in a group presentation with some uh, short part. And finally, when he's ready, uh, he can perform the short presentation on his own. Why is this effective? Um, this is effective because uh, it provides a chance to achieve success first. Here, on the first step, another success here, and another success here, and another success here, and everyone is more motivating students to do the, the another step. Step by step. <laughs> we know that anxious uh, students, and like some others, not just anxious, not just anxious students, um, sometimes uh, avoid to raise their hand and talk in, talk in front of other students. And uh, you can help him by regularly include him into active following of the lesson by asking him to answer some questions. It's a low risk situation for him, but it's a chance to practice. Then uh, you have to explain that public speaking is a skill that needs to be practiced. Uh, um, it needs many, many practice, uh, practice, and still it could never be perfectly done. Also, I believe you are all doing that, and uh, it is helpful for um, most of the students to uh, learn with their colleagues, peer learning. Why? Because if they are learning with their colleagues, they will practice presentation with each other, and the anxiety should decrease. Then, uh, you can show that you are taking into consideration the uh, diversity from all students, by giving them different tasks, depending on their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, maybe it's not in, um, necessary for every student to do the solo presentation. I don't know. You can um, uh, sometimes maybe skip that, uh, that task for that student. Uh, here is something similar like before. I believe you already see that uh, What's wrong with this uh, message? If you try to uh, help your student who is afraid of present presenting, uh, and you tell him, but everybody else did it, you will succeed. Don't be afraid. So I can uh, say again, it's not a good thing to say, because he may think uh, and misunderstood you that um, uh, if everybody else can do it, and I'm the only one who cannot, then I'm a total failure. And that would be a bad uh, bad message for him, even though you didn't mean, mean it in that, in that way. So if a student, uh, 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 it's possible that a student really has had some bad experiences performing um, in front of the classroom. And it's very important to consult your school psychologist or other counselor in that case. And uh, people who are suffering from social anxiety often blush as a symptom, and they may feel very uneasy about that. And uh, we should never, we teachers should never comment it in a bad way. And if we have to comment it, uh, from some reason, then we have to comment it as a normal body reaction like any other. Uh, maybe sometimes, and I think this was one of the questions before, and uh, I'm sorry, I cannot... Uh, uh, uh -huh, yeah, for the chat. For the chat. So I will try to answer... Yes, Mayana, thank you. Not, so I will try to answer their questions later. later. Um, and But I think mm -hmm. I, I saw this. Um, sometimes uh, students will say, I didn't learn. And it could be true, really, he didn't learn. But sometimes he would rather say, I didn't learn, than uh, uh, go to talk 
with a teacher because he's afraid, he's anxious. And uh, it's sometimes really, really hard to uh, defer those yeah, two things. Yeah. And it's important to remember that anxiety actually can appear even when a student has prepared himself to that very well. And um, often anxiety lasts during the learning time, so a day before the test or a few days before the test, and um, it can really interfere and disable the learning process itself. And in that way, it can actually lead to a failure in learning. So uh, we have to uh, talk to a student and ask him what happened, uh, why did you fail, um, was there any problem of any kind that we can talk about and try to solve it together. Uh, at the end of this presentation, so we will talk about some uh, uh, general general advices for uh, prevention of emotional uh, difficulties. One of them is actually, uh, one of them is anxiety, but there are also some others. And uh, you, have to, you have to tell your students that you are familiar with the fact that some people are anxious sometimes, and that you will understand it and try to help them with that if it happens. Uh, maybe the best will, moment to tell that is uh, on your first class at the beginning of the school year. And in this way we are uh, creating a supporting atmosphere for our students. And uh, when they hear you saying that you can expect it, it's a normal uh, feeling, uh, that should be some of the students' worries in the beginning. Uh, when you're advising your students about uh, how to organize their day, uh, how to organize the study. Um, please don't forget to advise them to have some time for fun, for rest and for relaxation, for play if they are younger. Because uh, we know that less uh, stress uh, uh, results with less perception of the threat and perception of the threat is a stimulus for anxiety. So less stress, less perception uh, of the threat here I, I can use this arrow, uh, less perception of the threat, uh, which leads, leads to less anxiety, less anxiety leads to better health, and this could go on and on, mm -hmm. actually, for hours. Yes, uh, 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 Mikhaila, thank you. Yes, yes, I agree also. Must be time for fun, actually, yes. Yeah. Not only uh, after the school, but Just in school. Just <laughs> Um, also, in, uh, in a case of anxiety, but in case of any other problem your student might have, uh, you, you may support him in seeking for help. Uh, if you think that you are not able to help him with anxiety, if you think you're not competent, uh, competent enough, or maybe you don't have enough time or something, be honest and tell him that you are not able to help him. But um, you can send him to see a school psychologist or other school counselor. And sometimes you will need to escort him to the school counselor because he will be afraid or ashamed to go uh, by himself. And doing this, uh, admitting to your student that you don't know everything, you are modeling exactly how it is normal and okay to seek for help when needed. Uh, so, now we are talking about anxiety, but this actually is true for many other situations and problems. And also one general uh, advice, recommendation is to keep rotating different teaching methods, because that will provide a chance for every student to feel capable of understanding the lecture. And, okay, okay. Um, the, uh, this will provide a chance for every student to feel that he's capable to understand the lectures, that he can uh, progress, and that um, that will be helpful for his self-confidence. And this one, self-confidence, is also one of the on this uh, point of this track on this track. Uh, like in dealing with uh, anxious, uh, anxious students, this is a uh, general true for achieving an inclusive atmosphere in the classroom. Uh, so I will now thank you for joining. Uh, I hope 
some of these advices will be useful to you, uh, maybe something for your private life. And uh, thank you for your questions, thank you for your uh, answers uh, uh, that we said. And Aha Mariana wants to say something? Well, we are sharing the mic now. Hello. <laughs> um, it was, yes, thank you, Olga. It was very interesting and useful. And uh, I must say that I, have, I couldn't write in chat a lot because uh, we are using the same uh, laptop, so I didn't want to disturb Helena. But I agree that a good laugh in the classroom could be the best medicine. Yes. But I must tell you, of course, we are all, let's say here, rather very open-minded teachers, funny, enthusiastic, right? And then, of course, there are those teachers that a bit are strict. And I would say that maybe if a student was taught with this kind of a teacher, then he could perceive any teacher as being a threat and scary. So, um, in general, right, the students get like a stereotype, oh my god, all the teachers are like the same. Oh my. And this happened actually to me. That's why I, I invited Helena, because some of her advice helped me um, how to, to, to try to uh, talk to the student who is really, really scared. Of course, I did laugh, I did everything, and uh, I even noticed that uh, my niece who goes to this school was a total, she was very scared, she was totally blank, she would get confused with the questions with the other, even, even if Helena was teaching her, or another colleague of mine, and her head uh, teacher noticed that problem, and she uh, advised her maybe to seek some help. So the, uh, the our Helena and other colleagues have been working with her. She is now progressing. She is self-confident after two or one years. I'm so happy to tell you that these things can be helpful. And what is our task? Not just to teach English, math, German, whatever, physics, uh, economics, and tourism. We are also here to help them get become adults, become people with all the stresses. And this is just one of my two cents that I wanted to add. Um, Helena was doing, uh, while she was doing the presentation, I was trying to follow your chat. Unfortunately, I couldn't comment much because you, uh, uh, I wouldn't, couldn't touch to not to be said. Josefina said, creating a relaxing and friendly atmosphere in the class is probably better than thousands of words. Totally agree with you, Josefina. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. One of our colleagues even loves to make, uh, tell jokes. But as I told you, I have a student who would come in front of me and they know that I'm talkative, funny, creative, blah, 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 blah. So a teacher who is oh, very open and talk to even the students I do not teach, they come and they get wet hands, cold hands, they are shaking in front of me. Then I tell them, okay, you can take the chair, no problem. And they are still get scared. Why is that? Because of the, 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 because the subject is difficult for them. I don't know. But we go through this process and it's getting better. So sometimes even, even uh, uh, my me laughing can be even scary. You never know. <laughs> um, then, then again, uh, uh, Michaela, Lika or Licha, I don't have to pronounce it, Michaela, uh, you said, I think it's important to encourage uh, students in all activities. I agree, but as maybe Helena mentioned, you can encourage them, right? But then if you see that your students still need those step by step, okay, take your time, you have all the time you need, you are teaching them one, two, three years. If you help them with, with the first and the second step, Soon they're going to get on the fourth step even quicker. So I think we can do, uh, I always say to my colleagues who, who are not very good in um, uh, ICT uh, knowledge, I tell them, okay, take your time. Something, some, sometimes you go step by step. Okay, this year take one tool. Next year you're going to do ten tools. So find your way, right? So that could be one. Then Amy, thank you so much, Amy, for your lovely comment. She said that targeting uh, 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 them with a couple of questions daily is a great way to be inclusive. Yes, yes, and Helena, maybe she did mention that. Uh, what Helena and I did together two years ago, right, is uh, um, I would like to share that. Uh, we did an experiment. We did a survey with our students. There were about 100 of them. We gave them a Google form a survey where we asked them, what do they, do they like answering on Kahoot, Socrative, do they like this formative assessment quick and fast, and everybody is involved, but nobody needs to say anything. And I would tell you, like 95% of students said, yes, definitely, we love it. But there were those still 5% who said that those uh, uh, tasks are okay, but sometimes 
uh, they sometimes the, the technique can uh, don't, don't work, or maybe they are very confident in themselves that they want to talk. So, as Helena mentioned, change the teaching methods, right? Sometimes it will be good. So everybody is going to be involved, and even the scared the scared student who oh oh my gosh he's going to see his answer he's going to be win he can't even do that under the false name if it's just a formative assessment. So there are these things that you can try and, and implement into your classes. And if I may add, uh, in this our experiment and uh, survey, uh, students uh, who said that they are actually afraid of raising their hand yes. were very happy with this method because they had a chance to participate. actually anonymously participate. Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, I'm just trying to see, yeah, um, there was a question by Olga. Olga, I suppose you were working in kindergarten. So uh, this is a question that we probably cannot answer so much as we are working in secondary school, the separation anxiety. But I think uh, Amy even answered to you very nice. I think sometimes it's the parents could be the problem, right? I think the point is that uh, maybe this, I would say that you could uh, uh, try to encourage the parents to be more. Uh, but this is something that I wouldn't go into and Helena as well. The separation anxiety uh, um, as this is not something that we could now deal with. But if we find out the answer, Helena will definitely write you the answer and you can find it later uh, answered in the uh, Itvining Inclusive Education Group. Um, yes, and, uh, uh, and there was a question if a student is too shy and okay. they don't want to tell you, oh, teacher, I'm afraid. What okay, then? sometimes it can happen that he is so, uh, still too shy, then you, 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 uh, you consult your uh, school psychologist or uh, other counselor, he will uh, tell you what to do with that exact child. Sometimes it can happen, really, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, but I, I suppose if you are very patient also, and with the student, you will probably notice that either they are having fear. But there was a... Maybe you can try to talk to him... Uh, like, uh, uh, one-on-one, one, uh, not definitely, not in Yeah, but there was a good question in the beginning. I will probably not, uh, I don't know if uh, Helena would be able to answer it. I remember the question. I don't know who answered, asked it. I apologize. But what if a student fakes anxiety because he, I don't know, didn't study for today or something? What if this happens? How can you recognize that? I think that was a very good question because I think many of our colleagues uh, 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 would have the same question in our school. So if you can't answer it now, Helena, it's no problem. We can then maybe... Yes, so, thank you, Laura. Do you think that the student can pretend to be anxious when he has not studied? Oh, very uh -huh. tricky one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Being a good actor. Oh my yeah. God, I'm scared. Uh, uh, I believe he can pretend, but uh, you have to look at... Uh, the physiological signs, um, and you have to know that uh, these signs are individual. And uh, if you know your student, you will probably be able to uh, make Recognize, a difference, yeah. recognize the yeah. differences between. Uh, yeah. When you know your student, you will know that they are either faking. How, yes, yeah. how if you are faking or not. It, oh, normally, it could be a problem uh, if you just started to teach certain students, yeah. but that's the, that's the thing. You, I think you should. Spend more time with your students to maybe get, you know. Yes, this and uh, I would recommend you to talk with his parents and maybe some of your colleagues. The, uh, if they experience the same thing. Teaching, yeah, uh, yeah. This child and uh, change your. Uh, it will change your experience. Yeah. What about? What did you have any problems? Uh, and I would like to thank Mariana for, for helping me with my English. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Well, she she was great, wasn't she? Her English is perfect. I was actually uh, bewildered, and I was so happy. She speaks very good, and now she can even sub substitute me in some of my <laughs> lessons in English when I travel around with each winner. Um, I would just like to add about uh, the, the talk, um, the, the faking one. Well, we noticed that a girl, she graduated now. We noticed there was a girl in our class. Uh, I taught her for four years. She was um, having this anxiety and scare uh, when and she would um, uh, summer. She would summer, but we noticed that when she is well prepared for the oral exam, she did well. She did well, and um, we noticed that, uh, and that's why we. I always would tell her, okay. Um, uh, it, Maybe you, I will tell you, okay, maybe in two, two, three days, get, just try to prepare, or maybe 
you can do your yeah. thing. So that she is well prepared and she doesn't feel, you know, maybe too anxious to talk in front of the class. But because I teach English, I have to ask her or I have to do an oral exam. I, the speaking is important as a foreign, foreign language. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you add anything? Uh, yes. Uh, practice. Uh, I uh, always advise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye. I always uh, suggest, my, uh, suggest my students to uh, prepare not for one day before the exam, but at least three days before, uh, because they have an opportunity to repeat, uh, to exercise, and to adapt to um, the answers, to the questions, uh, to the lesson. And uh, as, uh, and, uh, as, uh, as you can remember, we said that our thoughts uh, um, really also sense. Our thoughts are um, uh, having get, get, getting us with emotions. Yes, getting us with emotions. So uh, first day he will uh, think, okay, I know very little. I have to learn more. So I'm afraid. Maybe I won't do uh, good. I will fail. Second day he will think, okay, I have learned something. It's much better than it was yesterday. And the third day he will say, oh, I did a lot of work. I'm much, uh, I'm, I'm more so much secure, secure now. Myself. And so this perception will change, and also his emotion will be uh, less uh, unpleasant. Aurela, I'm just reading your question now. Some students have problems to express in front of others. What can we do? Well, I think Lena, it could be um, a few things. Maybe he has, um, I don't know, poor uh, communication skills. Uh, maybe he has social anxiety. Uh, maybe he's um, uh, um, he didn't prepare well. Uh, maybe he has problem with his peers there. Maybe um, uh, he's maybe experiencing some peer pressure. I, Aurela uh, Lucra, I uh, suggest you should talk to the student and ask him uh, what is uh, the problem that is stopping him from uh, talking to the others, and then you will uh, know uh, how to how to. So help if him. you yeah, try first maybe talking to him if you. Get something, then you can escort him. Maybe the school psychologist yes, could help. Yes, yes. I uh, we had a, a problem. But, uh, I yeah, know yeah, should I openly mm -hmm. ask him what? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Special students uh -huh. with special education. And, and that's so. that. There's um, uh, uh, still uh, my advice to you is to talk to him and maybe to his. I don't know. Maybe uh, if your student is a student with special needs. He has his personal assistant, or talk to his parents. I think it's a good, a, a good thing. The first thing that you have recognized that there is a problem, yes. and that's the most important thing at the beginning. Uh, there were two situations which I'm not going to tell now, uh, where I recognized and I immediately asked uh, Helena, and we really were. I was so happy. I can't tell you even more than they they have learned better English that we were able to help the students and I will tell you that these students uh, all uh, now one one has finished school she was more secure in herself she was so emotionally uh, open and uh, and become a more adult uh, after we, we recognized the problem and Helena was uh, doing some uh, working with her while the other other student there was a sim that was something uh, other problem and it was so nice. Uh, I was a bit afraid. I didn't know what's happening with him because he totally changed after a, a year. And I was like, There's has, there has to be something. And as a teacher, it's not my just work to teach him English. It's my work to help him with his emotions. So I asked Helena, uh, maybe you can talk to him. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what to do. And uh, she did. And now he's Super. She he even helps other students. He is very secure in himself. We find something that works with him. Of course, he was going through some peer pressure or whatever. But the point is that we did. We didn't stop doing nothing. Right? We tried, we wanted to help them. Okay. So, any any else, anything else to add? I would just have to say that my dear colleague was uh, the coordinator for the project we did. The project was for regional support uh, for. Uh, uh, for the inclusive edu education uh, for the South East, uh, Eastern Europe. The project lasted for three years. That's why we had so many experience in working with a lot of uh, uh, special education needs students. And uh, my school, uh, our school, actually is an inclusive school. For the past 10 years, we have been working a lot. I'm going to share you later the 
the video that uh, I have been interviewed with Helena and two of my colleagues and my uh, headmistress as I had an e training uh, webinar, uh, sorry, seminar and workshop in the uh, United Kingdom about inclusive education and about actually our group. Okay, if you have any other questions, if you would like to add something, uh, we can wrap it up. It's almost, it's past seven. Yes, the slides will be shared. Helena is willing to share the slide. Helena will try to answer any questions if they appeared. Maybe if we maybe missed them, I will check the chat. Um, if you still have any questions, because there was one question uh, by my, uh, by our colleague, uh, just a moment. Uh, uh, Olga, Olga, you uh, asked a question right as well in the chat, but now I'm just copying um, the link for the certificate, just a moment. So if you would like to get a certificate, please, uh, oh, oh, just uh, maybe I have, I hope it's the right link, just check please. Uh, too, too many open tabs here. Um, yeah, uh, it should be the, uh, the chat, right? Certificate. The certificate is, um, uh, please uh, answer the questions, add your name, email, and I'm going to send it to you by the end of the week. The recording and all the slides and the complete uh, website uh, with Helena's presentation will be soon uh, in our group as well. And I don't know what else to say, but to thank you all for coming. Um, uh, spread the word that this webinar, this special recording, and the webinar will be open for even uh, 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 getting the certificate even afterwards. And I have given the deadline before the September the first. You are the only one who will not be uh, needed to answer any quiz, but those who weren't unfortunately able to join us after watching the recording can get the certificate uh, because they are going to solve the quiz that Helena and I are going to make about five questions uh, just uh, in a way as a 10th webinar as a jubilee anniversary this time we are giving the certificate even afterwards thank you so much everybody for coming and thank just you everybody and goodbye goodbye and have a great summer yes thank you so much and uh, that's it we'll have to wrap it up I'm just going to find the last slide, and yes, um, Helena is also shared a lot.